All right, guys, I'm going to do this uh, setup video. I'm going to do some close-ups with the phone. But I'm just going to go over my setup on my Hobie. As you can see, I finally have a trailer for it. It's a jet ski trailer. Today was actually my first time towing it versus having it on the bed of my truck um, with the bed extender. The trailer worked great. I love it. Uh, I'm going to go over the mods that I'm going to do to it because right now it's just plain and simple. I just need to get it from my house to the lake right now. But I'll go over more of that later in the video. But um, just want to just going to go over how I have everything set up. Okay, so first off, obviously I have the 180 drive. This is the uh, first one, not the revi the revised one like you saw in my iCast video. So. It's not the easy on the water one to fix. And I've got modified pool cables. I got those from a Facebook group, the Hobie Pro Anglers, a uh, Hobie Pro Angler Owners Facebook group. Uh, if you're curious in that, try to join that and then you'll see everybody's post about Alan. He made these great uh, pool cables and they were like 20 bucks, I think. They work amazing. I. I don't, I don't have any doubts in my cables anymore breaking on the water, and I'm pretty rough with them now, and they're perfectly fine. They're a metal cable with this like tubing on it, and then they're color coded, and then the reverse is longer, just like the original cables. They work great, no complaints there. Best twenty dollars I've spent for that Mirage drive, and I pull my little uh, what you call it, things off. I don't like them. And then I have my rod holders that come with it. These things. I put them on the side and I carry my super stick. Let's see, this is a super stick. It's nine foot. I do not have a micro power pole. So I use that. Uh, I usually just use it for pushing off when I'm launching. Uh, if I get really into some shallow stuff, use it as a push pole. And occasionally I'll tie a rope to it and tie it to my anchor trolley, which is on the other side, and kind of anchor myself. Um, then I got my paddle also clipped in. It's just the Hobie paddle that came with it. Um, got my two Scotty mounts, my rod holders. Got my cup holder right there with a deeper measuring just for quick measurements um, I put it there just so when I'm doing tournaments um, if I need to call something I know what my smallest is I don't have to break out my my board and do all that I can just hold it up there and see if it's gonna call something if not I can just flip it back really quick if it's gonna be close then I'll measure it and see if it calls and then um, here I have both of these with the riser kit and dual steering. I did that in my how to turn a 2016 into a 2017 video. Um, as well as the dual paddle clips back here, one on each side. And for my fish finder, I do not use a Lorance or a Hummingbird. I use a Garmin. Let's turn it on right now. There we go. Um, this thing works great. This is the uh, 7DV or CV. They're the same thing. They're just different branding. One was last year and one was this past year. Some legal issue they had to change. And then I just use regular kayak straps that you would use for like the J mounts to do this one on each side to the trailer so it doesn't bump around and then I throw the excess in the hatch and then I just keep all my random stuff like and then my cutters my pliers phone charger and then when I'm on the water I throw my phone and everything like that in there I love this hatch I got rid of the the two tackle box system and put the tub in love it I also have this net that I use I usually keep it up front when I'm on the water 
It's a fray brill or fray bill. Cheap stuff. And then I just have this like insulation, pipe insulation on there. So okay. this is kind of my tackle situation. I use just these, what are they called? Sterlite. Get them at Walmart for like four bucks. And I throw all my soft plastics like that in one. And then in the other one, I throw all my crappy jigs, my weights, kind of just excess baits that don't have the bag anymore. Then all my hooks. And then this little, same brand, just smaller one, Sterlite. I keep both of these under my seat at all times. They fit perfectly on the pads. As you can see, those pads right there. Absolutely perfectly under the seat. Um, if you want to sit in the low position, though, you have to pull them out just a tad bit. As you can see, they stick out a little bit in the front when you sit in the low. But I always sit in the high, so they work perfect for me. There's plenty of clearance there. Uh, then I have my boondocks landing gear, which the wheels are on the back of the truck right now. I took them off because I was trailing it and I just kind of launched it off the trailer so I didn't need them today. But they're usually on there. And then I have my Arctic cooler. It's the camo. The fiance got me this last year for Christmas. It's the, one of the original soft packs. It's not one of the new ones. Um, it was before, I think, the whole Yeti lawsuit, and they changed the design. But it works great. It fits perfectly in between my age crate and the back well and seat and all that. Keep my lunch and all my water and stuff like that in here. And then I got my age crate which I wasn't a big fan of at first. And I have the little H-Crate cover for when it rains. Because I keep my batteries and backup cameras and little, my older GoPros and stuff like it in there just in case I need them. Um, yeah, but I wasn't too impressed with the H-Crate at first. But it's grown on me and I'm starting to use it more smart, I guess. So I have my... Scotty mount adapter here for my camera mount. So all my videos will be overhead now versus off the side. I kept hitting it with my rod when I go to uh, cast, when I go back to cast. Because I had it kind of coming more out at the side and like kind of seeing all of this kind of from this angle. And I cast sidearm because I can't cast over because the rods are standing straight up out of the H crate. So, and... I cast with my right hand and reel with my left. So every time I go back, I'd smack the camera. And the other side, the angle from the other side just really doesn't make sense because I'm usually casting in that direction. So it finally broke. I had it mounted right here, a little Scotty mount on the track system on the boondocks landing gear, and that broke off. My camera fell in the water. So now I've got it mounted to the H crate. It works great, it's overhead. Nice shot, so that'll be my videos from now on. And then I've got the four built-in rod holders with the bungee on them. And then I've got the Hobie tackle bin that I kind of just throw random stuff in and then baits that I've cut off today that I wasn't using. I didn't feel like throwing back in the box, kind of threw them out there to dry. And I got some random stuff in there. And then I have the cooler kind of strapped to the crate and the crate is strapped down to the kayak. Then I have these two Hobie rod holders. They're actually the two that came with the Hobie Livewell XL. I didn't put them on the, the Livewell. I just put them on my H crate because I use my H crate more. Um, but I mean, I got the rudder, which I forgot to pull up. That's nice. 
But it's on a trailer, so it's all good. Um, that's the oversized rudder, the sailing rudder for the Pro English series. So we're going to pull that up real quick. Yeah, it sticks out a little bit right here. As you guys can see where the, the factory one kind of goes flat right here. This one has a little sticks out a little bit and it sticks out a little bit deeper as you can see these scratch these scratches and kind of where it's been chipped away but yeah still works great the skeg's kind of the same same condition a little bit of grinding a little bit of rubbing overall works great and then on this side i have my anchor trolley that i was talking about earlier I rarely use it. I either tie a rope to it, to the spike, and then tie the spike to that, or I just kind of spike right through that if I'm in shallow. But yeah. Oh yeah, we'll look in, inside here too. Inside this tub, I keep my inflatable life jacket, another battery, some cameras, old GoPro. My Logitech speaker that I usually, those bungees, they come undone. And I kind of just bungee it right here around the A-trail. And then I've got volume control right there and I can put my phone away and just listen to a podcast or a stream some stuff through uh, Apple Music or whatever. And then I usually use this solar power battery right here with this plug to keep the... Uh, speaker going all day also have a anchor scotty mount anchor right here. so that's about it and then underneath the top of course i have my battery my hobie pro angler set up this is what i fished off today that's what i filmed that video on um Pretty happy with it. Don't think I would change much. It's a PA-12. It hangs over the jet ski trailer. It's a single jet ski trailer. Just a little bit. But yeah, more on the trailer. Okay, so today's the first day I used the trailer. Um, the lights need to be replaced. They work. But when I pulled the... The lights work. But when I pulled them out of the water... They filled up with water, so they're not submergible. So I'm gonna get some LED lights, take those off, and put submergible lights on there. That one doesn't work at all. This one right here. No idea why. Replace the bulb, still doesn't work. So I think there might be some corrosion up in there, but this one filled like all the way up with water. Probably gonna replace these wheels since one's white and one's galvanized. And the tires seem to be a little old. And then I'm probably going to grease uh, the axle and, and all that. Make sure that's good. But then the big plans are because right now it's just a single kayak trailer. And as you guys know, right, she has the Hobie Sport right there. But the idea is to put a riser rack on this right here and kind of raise it up above this kayak so we can put the compass when we get it on top like right above it right here so that way we can haul them one over top the other and i can put my rod tube which is right there off my ford before i got the toyota when i had the camper shell i had that mounted on top Hopefully we can put the rod tube and maybe another one. So we have some rod carriers on top beside the compass on the, the riser rack and then have the PA on the one below. As for the trailer, the only thing I've added is this. This is just a cheap one from Lowe's and then I put a new plug on it so it would fit my Toyota. It had the old four pin plug and I put a seven pin on it. 
I'm going to put some PVCs and took the bunks off. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep the PVC or go back to the bunks or just buy a Hobie cradle system. You guys let me know if there's anything wrong with the cradle system, if, if they're worth the money, because they are pretty expensive. They're like $200. So you guys let me know. If, uh, if I should do that or if I should just keep the PVC. But, yeah, that's about it. That is the overview of my Pro Angler. If you go back and look at the video six months ago when it's sitting in my garage, really before I even got to use it because it was still winter, you guys will know that it is totally different setup than it was six months ago. But, anyway, guys, uh... If you have any ideas for me on how I should change my setup or maybe ideas for the trailer, let me know in the comments below. They are always welcome. Um, but yeah, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Maybe it helps you out a little bit. Maybe you know, it helps you with your, your setup, gives you some ideas. And if you have something that I've overlooked and you know a better system than I have here, let me know because I'm definitely open to changing this and kind of perfecting it making it better but anyways thanks for watching guys uh stay tuned for more hobie videos hope you guys enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one <laughs>